Hey everybody. So you see on the screen here, we have a picture of uh, Jordan Neely. Um, you had a video on him earlier. We all know him, I'm sure, as the uh, man with mental illness, allegedly, who was on the train, had a, was going off, they said, you know, more likely verbal attack. He may, someone said he may have thrown a jacket. But as a result, Daniel, um, the Marine, put him in a chokehold. Two minutes subdued him. We know what happened. He, um, he had him in a chokehold for too long, for six minutes. And that basically allegedly led to uh, the death of Jordan Neely. So I want to have, I want to tell you what a woman who is married to someone, about two, two people, a uh, discussion that I had. So the first one, this lady, she's a mother of a man that has a uh, mental illness, has those kind of issues. Okay. They're both on medication. And then the second one, uh, it, it's her husband. And when I thought about that, I was like, wow, it escalated. And a lot of people said, oh my goodness, you know, that shouldn't have happened. And listen, I agree. It shouldn't have happened. The guy, when he had him in a chokehold, they had him, you know, down by the legs. That should have been it. But he kept, you know, he kept on holding him. But here's what I want to get to is the why. Even though Jordan Neely said, I don't care if you die, I care if I die. I think he was talking out of his mind, okay? I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know the man, just my opinion, okay? So, and then your family goes, quite often when it's a person and speaking just in general, when it comes to mental illness, they go, oh, I did, we did the best we could. That didn't have to happen. So... Let's look, go ahead and listen to the first lady. The first lady, well, we can't listen to her. She works a full-time job. She has a son with mental illness. And it's like she can't even have a normal life working and wondering, is he okay? Then when she comes home because he lives there, uh, he doesn't work, I think hers is to the capacity where he cannot even hold down a job. Okay, so when she comes home, guess what? She wants to see if he's there, checking in on him. If he's not there, she's worried. And then sometimes when he is there, when he does return home, guess what? Let her tell it. He may have these episodes where it's hard for her, it's hard for her to control. And you just can't make somebody take medication. So it's like, wow. He's in his 30s. That's her son. She worries about him. He has these episodes and it's just like, it's exhausting try to live her life and then have to take care of her son. And it gets out of hand. And as far as like having these people uh, in that situation with these issues, hey, maybe they should be in some type of home facility. Guess what? I guess the funding is not there where the politicians or the powers that be do not care. What it sounds like to me, they're getting these scripts to medication. They may get a check for disability for whatever reason. And guess what? That's it. There's no, oh, you're going to go ahead and live here, you know, and, and that's no guarantee as well, because people, you can't confide and they want, they may have a good day and a bad day. They're going to get out. You never know what's going to happen. But that right there, very stressful. Let's go ahead and get to lady number two, the one who's married to one. Now, when that young teen had called the police and said he's attacking everybody, that's what I wanted to get to. So for some of the family members, if you've done the best you can, then great. But let's not pretend. Because when you're dealing with people like this, it appears to be very exhausting. So one lady, she's married to a man like that, and he's on medications. When he's on the medication, seems to do fine, okay? The problem is, she said, he'll get to a point to where he's feeling okay, and he's like, oh, you know what? I don't need the medication. And I think what it is, I think it's the stigma. You know, like, oh, I'm, if I take this medication, that means I have this problem, you know, so... I don't want to really face it or, you know, have a stigma. And it's like, yo, dude, it's mental. No one's going to know unless you tell them or you do something. Your, your behavior dictates that. It's not like, okay, if you want a green jacket, that indicates mental illness. So no, no one's going to know. But I think it's just the stigma of mental illness. So she's like, yeah, you know what? When he doesn't, this lady told me when he doesn't take his medication. And it's someone I know well. You know what she says? She says to me, she said he acts differently. And he acts differently so that guess what? She's afraid for her safety.
he so this is someone that's not a stranger she said he acts differently so to the point that she is afraid for her safety i mentioned her before afraid for her safety so if this is someone that she knows and i don't know if jordan neely was on medication or took it or not i'm sharing with you and again i'm not saying oh he got what he deserved i think his behavior put him in that position I, yes yes i do and i think the marine he should have let go but he didn't so I thought about it. She said, if she's afraid for her safety, and that got me to thinking. So if you're afraid for your safety, and this is your man, and you're afraid for your safety, this is somebody you sleep with every night. If you're afraid for your safety, no offense, but what do people expect others to do? I might be terrified. Seriously. I'm not anti Jordan Neely. But I'm going to let you know, so many family members, oh, that didn't have to happen. I thought about it. So if she's afraid for her safety, if a person like that has an episode, why the heck do you think somebody would call 911 on the subway? The lady said he's attacking everybody. And it sounds like to me, someone says he threw a jacket. Okay, he's attacking everybody. I think the attack was more verbal. But guess what? People can't assume what he's just talking. You think? So some of the family members that show up now, and I understand it's their loved one, I thought about it. Like that lady, the first one, people have their own lives, and people probably get tired. I can't, I said, wow, this is like she really can't have her own life, the, the first lady, because it's like this is your son, and he's with you, and you're having to handle things, and you worry. Then you get out from work, you got to go home, and you're still worrying about it. Where did he go? What's he doing? Is he going to come home? Has he hurt anyone? Has someone hurt him? The mental illness is real. And also the effect that it has on families is obviously real. And that's why I think sometimes when people like this here kind of go away, leave the house for a little bit, believe it or not, that might be that family members, just a moment of peace. And you can't hold somebody hostage. I thought about that. I'm like, so if she's saying them, when he doesn't take his medicine, he acts differently and it scales her. You're concerned for your safety and it just made me think. Then what, what are they expecting other people to do if a person loses it? It's not normal to sit up here and go, oh, I don't care if I die. I don't care if you die. To me, it sounds like an episode. I've, have you seen a video from this like Michael Jackson? That's not normal to even say that. I don't care if I die. I don't care if you die. To, to me, it's not normal. Just my opinion. Maybe there's somebody is. That's not normal. But it got me. And I thought about it. I said, you know, that's probably why the teen called 911. Many people say they were afraid. Many women were. Again, the Marine was seen to some as a hero. It went too far. In a choke call, I know people can like pass out. But unfortunately, he died. So the mental health either is not being addressed in the country. F funding, it sounds like to me what's pretty much happening. There are, someone can do something and they may stay in the hospital for a little while. That's what I was also told. But then next thing you know, here's your medication. Take that and boop, and there you go. There you go. So this mental illness, yeah, that's a heck of a serious illness in this country. All the money they spent on these illegal immigrants, you could have probably spent it on a little place for them, for people with mental illness to go ahead and live. Y you think? Look at the money spent on Chicago, New York. Chicago now, the roundup may happen, but you're already spending a billion dollars on illegal immigrants. Are you, are you really kidding me? New York has spent a whole lot of money. You think now New York, guess what? They're going to stop that. Uh, what is this? The food card program for illegal immigrants. And I cannot believe this. They were kidding. You got to be kidding me. I cannot believe they were getting 350 a week. You please stop playing with me.
I, how much food do, do you need? How much is a pack of bread in New York? Fifteen dollars. Who the heck? Three hundred and fifty dollars a week for food? That program is now canceled. Could have put some of that money toward the Americans facing mental illness. So this here. Everybody thought you saw somebody walking around threatening. That, that would concern me. They had young black men in Palm Beach did the same thing at the Dollar Tree on Okeechobee. Oh, he just acting crazy. And like, and it was even on YouTube. He was calling people like, oh, like someone's, you know, like, I'm going to call up somebody. Women and children scared. Not everybody's used to this kind of behavior, so we can't normalize it. It's like somebody outside of your house. I'm going to burn this thing down. Well, I'm going to make a phone call. And guess what? Uh, uh oh, I'm by myself. I, I am going to go ahead and get something. What do you, I'm calling 911 and making a phone call. And guess what? I'm going to, I may go and grab something. Because what you're not going to do is Molotov. I just go, well, you know, he said he was going to do it. And I didn't think so. If, you know, they said, oh, he didn't see anything. But hell, we don't know what a person is going to do. So this here, I thought about that when she said it. And I, you know, I just told her, I would be out of there. She's like, sometimes he doesn't take the medication and he starts to act differently. And it girl, we already told her, it's just go, leave this guy, divorce him. But when he gets on the medication, and then he gets to the point, you know, she tries to like coax him, hey, you might need the medication. I want to take it. You need to take the medication, sir. So I just want to go ahead and point that out. Mental illness in this country, it's not, I don't think it's been taken seriously. That's why, I know, how many times have we seen somebody end up dead or they'll kill someone? In this case, he lost his life. But how many times have we seen somebody kill someone? Oh, mental illness in New York City, going around stabbing folks, going around shooting folks. Oh, mental illness. And the one with the mental illness is still here. But then somebody's dead. They've had one. He's a serial killer. He's killed a, a, a quite a few people, you think? So if you want to holler about Jordan Neely, let's get to the root of the problem. They need to do more of my people for, for people to have mental illness. Walking around saying, I don't care if I die, I don't care if you die. That, that's not, I don't care. what. To me, that's not normal. That would set anybody on edge. Now, maybe if you're used to folks just talking crazy, that, that's different. That tells me a person has taken leave. My opinion, you've taken leave of your senses. Your, your state of mind is not right. Your state of mind is not right. Crazy things happen. People have it out on the subway all the time. There have been many videos and people can call the police. But in this case, they call the police. So aside Holland, you know, oh, they got to go ahead and convict what Daniel Perry. Maybe it's time to push for some legis legislative policy, some kind of policy, some kind of funding to address this issue. Aside from writing a script and saying, OK, here you go. Stay here a couple of weeks. OK, we're going to get a psychiatrist and talk to you. Write a prescription. Here you go. Because obviously that's not working. So for my homegirl that said that. Sometimes he doesn't take his medication and it scares her. She's concerned for her safety. It has made me think, then what the hell do people think about other folks? Just supposed to normalize it? If she's afraid for her safety, again, yeah, it's somebody she knows, her husband. What do you think strangers, but if he starts acting differently? Because he doesn't want to take medication. Oh, I feel fine. And in that circumstance, she said that he thinks he feels okay. So that's his reason for not taking it. But yet still, she feels for her safety. Let me tell you how serious the mental illness is. When people say, oh, family did the best they could. Sometimes the family is drained. We need to tell the truth about the mental illness and stop pretending. We thought it was going to be okay. Sometimes family gets so tired of it, they don't want to be around them. Around 
people need to start being honest about the mental illness that's affecting them and their family members. Stop pretending like, well, we thought, no, people want to be quiet and like, like everything is fine and it's not. I believe both these women, it takes a toll on them. And when it takes a toll, they want to sometimes get away. Looking forward to going to work while get away from the mental, from the young men at home that has a, that's facing the issue. Men and women. So you don't think families are facing the same thing? You don't think some of them want to kind of get away? We need to tell the truth about mental illness and the effect it's having on families, on the people that know them. Instead of just go ahead and keeping quiet and pretending like everything is fine, then they didn't have to kill him. Why would he act that way? In my opinion, I think the, the mental illness is called, it's that I think it's just it normal, it's causing abnormal behavior. That's why a person does that. Who else would say that? I don't care if I die, I don't care if you're not saying this out loud. Whoever, why would you just verbally attack people? Something is wrong. But I know we want to put the band aid on it. Let's say Daniel uh, Perry is the, the Marine who put him in a chokehold for six minutes, causing Jordan, Jordan nearly to die. Let's say he goes to prison for 10, 15 years. Let's see if that happens. Is that it? Then men are going to be happy, but the problem is still there. What about the next case, the next person? So if you want to fight for something, let's fight for some funding. How about, how about, how about that? If you're really serious. Let's fight for funding. Let's fight for better care. Not just uh, somebody talk to you for a little bit. You sleep here in a, a facility for a couple of weeks and then they give, get you out and here's your prescription. If we're really serious about it, let's fight for funding. Let's fight for better care. But in, but in my guess, that's not going to be it. Let's say they can get a guilty verdict for Daniel Perry, which we don't know. I mean, I can't forecast it. I can call it. But if it happens, okay, th th then what? Well, th that's it. And see, that's the problem right there, the, the fake outrage. It's easy to stand up and holler because you don't have nothing else to do or stand up and holler because you're frustrated. I totally get it. it it's easy to do that. But like I said, let's not be hypocritical. If we are caring so much about Jordan Neely for all the protesters, if we're really, really caring about this man and about what happened, and we really, really want to affect change, then guess what? Do more than get in the streets and holler. Convict Daniel Perry. Do, do more than that, that. If you get a convic conviction, if he's found good to understand. So, again, if we're really, really serious, for those who are really serious about it, and you feel so strongly about it, okay, then the fight is not over. What it's time for you to do is to go ahead and get together, get a petition, fight for legislation, fight for policies, fight for funding. Who's going to start the, uh, if we're really serious, who's going to start the uh, Jordan Neely Foundation? Is there one? If there's one started, great. If we're really serious, where's the Jordan Neely Foundation so we can raise more awareness and the need for funding so this does not happen? You know what my guess is? And I know I just, you know... I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to feed you some BS. Well, you know, no. my, my guess is we're really not that serious because you know what? That begins the real work. And if someone has done that, kudos, I'm proud of you. But people are quick to attack somebody from a, for a different point of view. So let's attack this issue for those who want to go ahead and how dare you and whoop de whoop de whoop. Well, if you are that serious and if you really care about men, people with mental illnesses, okay? So we won't have another Jordan Neely. If we're really that serious, then where's the petition? Where is the groundwork? Where's the petition? Where's the trying to raise money for better funding? Where's the putting the putting the pressure on the lawmakers, the politicians? Hey, we need better funding to address this issue where's where is that who, who, who's gonna put the work in for that or maybe it's just easier to holla convict daniel perry and then call it a day let me know what you think i'm just saying if you're really that serious about it and we're ready to box up with somebody who's not saying guilty guilty i'm analyzing things Attention to detail. I don't get in my feelings and go, oh, that guilty, guilty. 
and we can agree to disagree. But what I want to know is, for those who are so, how dare you and guilty, guilty, okay, let's go to phase two. After this trial is over, come with me, guilty verdict or not, let's go to phase two. Let's get to the real work. You, you ready? I mean, yeah, somebody already ready to box up. Let's get to the real world. Not, not just run your mouth and hold up a sign. I'm a keyboard warrior and I can't even use that. that you know, keep that black man for nothing. It's not like the man. Again, that's mental illness. He can't, I'm assuming, can't control that. That's why there are a lot of people on medication that had that issue. I can't say whether he was on it or not. But if he hadn't had that, maybe if he had treatment, this wouldn't have happened, as you all want to say. So for all those who, oh, how dare you not be pro Daniel kneeling, I'm going to say it again for the ones in the back. Now, everybody's used to a whole bunch of turmoil and action. You say, oh, that ain't nothing, child. Again, old girl just say, what did she say? She's afraid. He doesn't think it's medication. It scares her. Afraid for her safety. Oh, and let me tell you about her. You know what's happened with her? Trying to hold on to her man with mental illness. Guess what's happened? She's in depression. Depressed so on medication and got to a point still there doesn't want to continue breathing never known her to be that way before never known her for going on ooh heck 20 years yeah but we don't want to talk about that but we sure can't show up in the aftermath. So, yeah, so I'm just going to keep it real. For those of you who are gung-ho and how dare I don't be chanting, you know, uh, Daniel Perry, lock him up, lock his butt up, lock his butt up. If we're really, really serious, again, unless it's just a little, you know, it may be, I'm not going to say fake outrage. I'm just going to label it as minimal outrage. If we're really that serious, and guess what? After this right here, oh, hey, we can start today. If we're that serious... Where's the push? We can push for policies. We can push for more funding to handle this issue. If that's serious, or maybe we're not that serious. Maybe it's just a little, you know, it's a minimal outrage. We some do a bunch of hollering for that, and then that's it. That's how you know how serious people are. Do the real work. Where's the uh, Jordan Neely Foundation? If there is one, congratulations. Let me know. Where's the Where's the request for funding? The petitions. Where is that? Let's deal with the real issue because of more than likely, if he didn't have what do you call this a mental illness, more than likely he would have been on the subway hollering. I don't care if you die. I don't care if I die. Getting everybody scared, terrorizing people. Well, let me guess. Some folk, we just want to do the, do the, do the, be demonstrative and just do the part where we're hollering. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we like that part. Let's get to the real issue. Let's fight for funding. Let's use the keyboard to do that. I'll wait. Yeah, so, so that's my thing. You know, I thought about it. If this woman, her husband doesn't take, doesn't take the medication, and it scares her, then what I thought about it, then what do you expect for people that don't know the individual? And this is somebody you know. You should know the one enough to know, hey, he's not going to harm me. He's just out of his medication. Then you should already know. Oh, but obviously you don't. So what do we expect of strangers when a person has an episode? So yeah. So again, Let's fight for real change. Aside from hollering and attacking, if you're that, if you're so much passionate, so passionate about it, and you want to make a difference, aside from seeing, you know, what the jury may do with Daniel Perry locked up, how about we start uh, requesting funding, demanding funding from the lawmakers? Where's the Jordan Neely bill at? And we can get funding so this doesn't happen again. Let me guess. Some may call it fake outrage or just limited outrage. I'm going to call it lazy outrage because that tells me that, guess what? You're not really serious. You just want to go ahead and get hyped up on something. If you're serious, keep it going. If we're that serious, yeah. Besides attacking somebody online, and I'm going to still hold on my, my opinion that that's fine. You can email all day. How about you email the politicians? How about you do that? 
How about you do a campaign? Get it? Get a hundred thousand signatures, whatever the number is, to show, and just flood the office. We are demanding funding for mental illness so we don't have another Jordan in there. How about we do that? But let me guess, we're not going to do that. Yeah, I, I, I got it. Some of the keyboard warriors get a little lazy, huh? So we're going to put the real work in if you really, really care about it. What he, what he did to a black man? Again, it might already be one. If so, congratulations. But if not, where's the Jordan Neely fund? Where, where is it? I'm asking for a friend again. I said that because I couldn't find it. Maybe, maybe it's there. I'm going to do one last check. Let's see. And I, I could be wrong. Let me go ahead. I'm just going to check because you know what? I don't want to give any misinformation. So I'm getting ready to look up and see. And because you know what? There might be. And I want to make sure. Yeah. I'm going to check right now. I want to make sure that if there is a uh, Jordan Neely fund, that we give credit to the person or person that started that. So I'm just going to type in Jordan. There might be a Jordan Neely Foundation. Let's see. Uh oh. Jordan Neely Fund. I don't mean to go fund me. I don't. I, I can't find one. Exactly what I thought. I can't find one, ladies and gentlemen. Where's it at? Where's the Jordan Neely Fund? Does anybody know? Because who's going to start it? Like I said, limited outrage. Just lock up Daniel Perry. Just lock him up. But what are we what are we going to do if we're so caring? What are we going to do to make sure there's not a Jordan Neely number two? Let me guess. Nothing. Well, well, that's what I thought. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you. And I thought about it. I'm supposed to just hop on. Oh, they better lock him up. Analyze things. The behavior. Why do people call 911? And like I said to my homegirl, so if you're afraid of him, I thought about that. What do you expect other people to do? What, what do you expect others to do? And you're afraid for your life, for your safety. So if you really care, y'all know what to do, and I'm out.